In this uh, last lecture uh, of the third week, uh, we will be discussing about orbit and order analysis, how these are techniques of uh, signal processing which are used to find out the displacements in the rotating shift shafts in the x and y directions. For example, as you know every machine essentially a rotating machine consists of a shaft which has a, which is supported on bearings okay. and particularly when you talk about we will talk about large motions uh, or large rotors where there is a lot of weights etcetera like a set of turbine blades. So, and these kind of large rotor systems or machines are actually supported on general bearings. So, it is this radial displacement between say our x axis and y axis in the radial plane and this is my longitudinal axis. So, if a shaft is rotating what could happen that if there was some out of center rotation or there is a load which is you know an unbalanced load which is rotating like a hot spot ok. This is in space or some radial theta. So, what is going to happen is every rotation this point will either decrease or increase. So, there is a variation in x and y in terms of displacement. Okay. And uh, this kind of plots between the displacements in x and y direction are known as orbits and this is an orbit. Now, a lot of things can happen depending on the relationship between x and y. For example, if I take x is equal to a sin omega t and y is equal to a cosine omega t. If I plot them, I will get a perfect circle. Now, if there is a see omega is nothing but 2 pi f, when f is nothing but n by 60, where n is in rpm. So, unit of f is in hertz. So, for every speed and particularly these machines are run at certain constant speed omega. Now, what happens when I have a transducer which is measuring may be a transducer here y and a transducer x. Okay. Just looking at this plots now if what happens if the amplitude for example, let this, this be an due to an unbalance. Okay. So, this amplitude of this orbit would grow up and that is a very sure way of finding out that a radial vector has occurred because of a defect like an unbalance and this circle is going to blow up and we will see some examples which we have done on a test trick and then we will see how this orbit looks like. But this is one relationship where a and uh, the x and y are 90 degree out of phase and 
though they are you know this this means what because physically these transducers are 90 degree apart okay so i should get a circle and usually in large turbines okay if you see large turbines when there are lot of such sets and they are supported on bearings and every plane they are actually two probes are there which are kept at 45 degrees so this becomes 90 degree so one may be an r1 r2 r1 r2 so if we look at the orbits at location a and location b and they could be a they'll be perfect circle and with time if the circle increases you know something has happened um, which has been responsible for increasing the amplitude like i told you the case of an unbalance but if you know if x is equal to a sin omega t and y is equal to a sin omega t just to recap if you draw a line x and y are the same you will get a straight line because they are the same this is of course at 45 degree okay the frequency frequency of one signal with respect to another signal so for example if x is a sin omega t and y is a cosine 2 omega t i will see a plot where this is x y this kind of a plot okay we will see better plots so, and then if i change it one versus the other this could change like this okay and so on so the relationship between the signals and the frequencies will show up and this and these are known as the lesser jaws figures but another thing also happens is the phase difference between the signals suppose x is equal to a sin omega t and y is equal to a cosine omega t plus maybe a phase difference pi by 4 so what would happen x y you will see from an circle this would become an ellipse okay and so on of course you know this would be same a okay so this is because of a 45 degree so all this studies and these are all being done in time domain earlier we had seen that in order to analyze the find out the frequency of a signal we have to either do an fft or you know maybe also do a filtering but in such orbit analysis these are not required just by comparing signals and plotting one against the other you can get this orbit plots and from the shape of the orbit plot you can find out a lot of information about the phase relationship between these two signals about the amplitude of one signal as opposed to another signal and so on so this could be uh, happening okay now you see here for the same amplitude you know this is what we discussed that the frequencies is the same between the x and the y orbit and this is one is twice the other and so on and the x axis and the y axis so and of course if it is 10 times you will see 10 such lobes 
So, orbit analysis is a very quick way to find out the let me get the wrong pens out of the way. Yeah. So, what happens in the orbit analysis I could do many things compare frequencies that means if one frequency is known looking at the orbit plot I can say whether the other frequency is twice thrice some multiples of it because the shape of that plot would change. Next is orbit amplitude would grow with a defect if the radial vibrations or displacements increase orbit is going to get enlarged and this is always in time domain. Of course, the machine is running at a constant speed. So, I will show you a practical demonstration of a video wherein uh, we are doing an orbit analysis on a test trig and let me show you this. If you see here this is a uh, rotor rig wherein we have put transducers in x plane you know if you see here there is one in the x plane and one in the y plane and these transducers are for some other measurements which we are doing in the laboratory and this is a rotor which is supported on two bearings driven by a motor at a constant speed. And these are the two transducers okay? measuring one is measuring x and other is measuring y. So, these are actually accelerometers, but then once we have the acceleration we can integrate them to get the velocity and then, then another integration we can get the displacement. So, this is going to rotate and this is a photo tag which is used to measure the rotational speed. And now, this is going to run. If you see here, this is the orbit between the x and y transducers and you can see a value here. Next is what we did is we increase the Next is we, we put a mass to it, so that we created an artificial unbalance. And you see here the amplitude increased because of the unbalance and a lot of takeaways from this. We of course, are running this rotor at a constant rpm of 958 rpm and this magnitude has increased compared to the previous case when there was no unbalance, but you see this if this radial displacements of x and y values were same I would have got it as a perfect circle, but there is a phase difference because there is some other defects in this. So, this has given a phase difference of 45 degree apart from the x and y axis. So, this kind of orbit helps you qualitatively very easily look into the machines and then find out the what are the faults in them. Okay. Another topic of interest which is uh, known as order analysis. So, in order analysis it is the as it says when the analysis is related to rotational speed it is called order anal analysis. Now, let me give an example why order analysis is helpful. 
Now, when we do a frequency domain transformation of any signal, okay, we have assumed that the signal to be stationary. Okay, but what happens if there is a small change in the frequency speed? in the speed and if I am doing multiple frequency domain transformations that is you no know, I do because you know as you are, you will I will we will discuss this later on to reduce the random error in any measurements we must average. Similarly, when we do the frequency domain computations using fast Fourier transforms to reduce the random error of the numerical computations we always you know do a good number of averaging because this random error could be because of a variation in the signal which is reflected in the fast Fourier transform. But when we do the averaging it takes certain time. So, what happens if I stack all of them together one by one. So, I will get what is known as this in the this is the time domain axis, this is the frequency, this is the time. So, this is known as what is known as a waterfall plot. plot. But you see because this takes certain time to do in the time when this number of averages are being done, what if the machine speed change? How is that going to affect? That would affect because if the things are related to the machine speed these frequencies would change. So, what I would have is known as frequency smearing. Okay. Now, to avoid this frequency smearing what we do instead is look at the rotation. number of rotations. Okay. So, obviously, when it is moving at a constant speed the time taken for one rotation will be different for time taken for another rotation if the speed changes. But if I look at the angular displacement it is one rotation whether it be it at a different speed. So, best is to look into an angular domain or the rotational domain and that is why many systems where speed changes are related to the rotations of one speed uh, this order analysis helps us identify frequencies which are changing with the rotational speed and not changing with the rotational speed. I will give an example to explain this. So, this is an automobile crankshaft. Okay. From the crankshaft we have uh, maybe a pulley for the alternator may be a pulley for the AC compressor, may be a pulley for the water pump. Okay. So, what happens a belt would be going around this way. Or say So, this is rotating in a particular direction. So, all of them are rotating. Okay. So, this is at an rpm depending on the pulley diameter. So, this is my crankshaft. Okay. So, this is my alternator. this is the water pump, this is the AC compressor, particularly in an engine crankshaft is which the powering shaft. So, all the speeds of this you know, N 1, N 2, N 3 they are all functions of N. Okay. 
Now, if n changes, n 1 would change, n 2 would change, n 3 would change. So, if I if I you know somehow from the engine I measure the vibration okay, and did an F F T as a waterfall plot. What would happen if this was running at constant speed? All this n1, n2, n3, they are really related to the n1. So you now maybe some is some fractions or some multiples of n. Maybe for sake of argument, this is some k1 times n. This is some k2 times n. This is k3 times n. So you see, k1, k2, k3 are constants which depends on the diameter ratios. So maybe d if this is the diameter d d by so d1 by d and so on okay so certain constants uh, will happen now because and they are all running at the same linear speed if the belt is moving at the same linear speed this kind of ratios would occur but question is if in the process of averaging this speed has changed if i do an waterfall plot all the frequencies would smear and it would be very difficult for me to find out frequencies at n 1 by 60, n 2 by 60, n 3 by 60. Okay. So, rather if I see an order that at what multiples of n is my alternator frequency. So, this k 1 is going to be constant. So, somebody will say the alternator is the tenth order of the rotational speed of the crankshaft. That means, whatever be the speed of the crankshaft, ten times that is going to be your alternator's frequency and so on. So, this helps us identify components which are changing with speed and components which are not changing with speed. For example, suppose I had one component which had a structure, maybe the engine casing, it has a natural frequency which is equal to f n and no matter how different the speed is going to be, your f n is never going to change, is not it. So, this can be seen in such an waterfall uh, order analysis. Okay. So, the methods of order analysis is f f t based order analysis time signal recording and short time Fourier transform and volt kalman order tracking. To de demonstrate this, I will show you another video. See, this is the same rig. Now, there are two plots here. One, this is the frequency domain plot, and this is in number of FFTs or in it, this could be in time domain as well and the amplitude. So, in the process, what we did, you know, we increased the speed and decreased the speed. So, in the frequency domain here, you see, uh, sorry, in the frequency domain, you see, I am not able to see clearly any distinct frequencies because the speed was changing, the frequency got smeared. Whereas, in order analysis, they are all related to the rotation. So, 1 x means the first rotational speed and multiples, multiple orders. So, multiple orders will not change, you know. This is related to the speed. So, if I stack them up somehow at, at of course, this is running at a, a different speeds. Even though it is running at different speeds, I will see events which are related to these ratios k 1, k 2, k 3 and k 3 and so on. So, this is a linear f f t okay. and this is how ordinal analysis helps us identify things which are related, uh, related to the rotational speed. Now, imagine in this order analysis, if there is one frequency which was not related to the order which was a constant, it would stay and it would not move okay. and that is the advantage of such uh, order analysis. Okay. 
and the same plot we have plotted also a spectrogram I am increasing, decreasing the speed about four times in this uh, run. So you see here the top one is the order analysis plot and the bottom one is the normal FFT plot and this is the spectrogram that means the colored FFTs are so the into the plane of the projection is the color contour. You see there is a lot of frequency smearing okay, and this is still 3.2 kilohertz and these are 4 times we have increased and decreased the speed of that rig. So you see there is good amount of frequency smearing but if you look at the order plots, you will see that the distinct orders which are related to the rotational speed strictly come out as straight lines. Okay. So, this is a strong presence of rotational orders in such a system. Okay. So, this was the setup for order tracking which I just showed you okay, in, the, in the video. So, here we change the unbalanced mass and through this variac here we could increase and decrease the speed okay, in that range and this is the photo tag used to measure the rpm. And so, this is the normal condition waterfall plot okay. and there is frequency smearing and there is a some amount of uh, initial unbalance. Okay. This is the run up order and the same thing in the contour plot you see the spectrums. But if the unbalanced plot what has happened, the intensity of this vibration radial vibrations has increased. So, you see strictly strong orders which is missing in the FFT when we show it in the waterfall okay. and you see these strong lines here. So, order analysis helps you identify frequencies which are related to the rotational speed of the powered shafts. Thank you.